your seventh time? Yeah, I've been many, many trips to Nepal over the years. Uh, incredibly special place. And um, yeah, just delighted to be back for, I suppose, what's the biggest and best ever season of the Everest Premier League. Right. So how has uh, been the experience till now? Yeah, look, it, it's been a super start to the tournament. The first couple of games were fantastic. And then, unfortunately, the weather gods haven't quite played ball with us over the, the recent days, the last sort of 24, 36 hours or so, and it's probably been a little bit difficult purely because of the amount of rain that we've had, and that's led to a really soft outfield, and very understandably, it's just been not possible to get any play in, um, both in what was game, let me get this right, <laughs> game three of the tournament, which was unfortunately washed out halfway through, and then yesterday the double header, game four and game five, but do have some news. The EPL management have met with the six franchise owners and they've decided that that double header yesterday will be refixed and there's now going to be every effort made over the coming days to ensure that any further matches that might have to be abandoned due to where it will be refixed as much as is possible, you know. So every effort's going to be made to try and get cricket in throughout this biggest and best year of the Everest Premier League. Absolutely. The weather has not necessarily been, <laughs> been on our feet. Hasn't been perfect. No, not at all. And this is very unusual for Nepal this season. It should be bright and clear and you should be, you know, seeing kites flying around and no rain actually. Well, we're getting a little bit of that. Like the morning yesterday was really, really beautiful. You know, we had the most stunning sun splitting the heavens. Right. The problem was the outfield and that was due to the scale of rain the day before. It was really torrential rain. Right. We were there in the commentary box. There was a, th a few thunderclaps. Mm. It's actually a bit scary and those flash of lightning but that really heavy rain the square is being well protected and the, the wickets the pitches are really good it's the outfield that's causing the problem right. um, so what do you think uh, what was uh, say the biggest loss uh, for the fans this season because of the rain because uh, we've heard a lot of fans complaining about you know, really disappointed about after the not being able to <laughs> bat and I heard that he left uh, Nepal yesterday yeah. right? so so he flew out yesterday, but I think simply his presence here has been a massive boost, not just for the league, but for cricket here in Nepal. Uh, an icon of the game, one of the, the greats of the last 20 or 30 years, right up there with the superstars, the A.B. de Villiers, the Chris Gales, the Shahid Afridis, the M.S. De Jong. So the day to get somebody like him here to Nepal, who spoke so glowingly and so beautifully about what he thought of Nepali cricket, the potential for Nepali cricket, and the future for the game here, he took a flight up to... Mount Everest, I think he'll be back. We didn't get to see him back, we got to see him bowl. We got to see him get the arms outstretched with the, a free celebration. But unfortunately, didn't get to see him boom when he sixes into the crowd. You've been here for the seventh time, you never know, you know. By uh, USA, but we rounded out the series with the most brilliant performance, Dad Watmore's final game, and what was Constitution Day for Nepal, a really special day. There was a cake cut before the game, the uh, Nepali ambassador to Oman was there. And it seemed to just raise the spirits of the side. Karen KC bowled his best spell of the tournament, took four wickets in a player of the match performance, and then Lamachani did what he always does, which is and what he was born to do, is what I said. He takes wickets. He got four for Oman, top of the table, and only lost two games going into that game. Bowled eight for 121. And then Gwynendra Mala said, we're going to chase this in a hurry. And they got it done, one by seven wickets. So a perfect finish to Dad Watmore's tenure. I just personally wish it had been a little bit longer. We wish him well for the future. He's a great man. Thank you so much for summarizing the Oman tour for us. Uh, we, yeah, we, we saw the cake and all, and we we're like, wow, that's that's really nice for them to to be that thoughtful. You know, it, it sort of like gives the spirits of Nepali fan here as well. Yeah, it was, it was a lovely yeah, touch. Yeah, it was right. Uh, and the amazing thing was that even though we were in in Muscat in Oman, uh, it felt like a home game for Nepal. There was that many Nepal fans there. Right. Uh, it's going to be a T20 World Cup venue uh, coming up, and they're building this beautiful 4,500-seater uh, stadium. The stands are temporary, but the rest of the infrastructure is permanent. And one of those 1,000-seater grandstands was half full with Nepali fans coming in and cheering for their heroes. And It was a, a special day to be involved with. And I think Dad Watmore he signed off in the perfect way, and I think that's no less than he deserved. He was brilliant whilst he was here. I believe he's moving on now to be head coach of Baroda in India. All right. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> Let's talk about today's match, uh, Kathmandu Kings 11 and versus Pokhara Rhinos once yep. again. I think we know Tandari as a you know, captain really, really needs to gear up this, uh, this for this match. If he really needs to, like, he really needs to come back stronger from uh, the last shaky start. How do you think is he going to change the team's um, equation, or let's say, how are he, how is he going to mobilize the players today? 
Yeah, so it's bounce back ability that he's got to find out of his side. And he's got enough experience. He's kind of probably in the middle stages of his career now, the wicket keeper batsman. He was up the order, but he was castled by the young left arm seamer bowled around his legs. I think you'll need to leave from the front a bit better, particularly with the bat. And if you look at you know, the fans there, they are waiting very patiently indeed, because right now the toss is delayed. Um, but yeah, look, they've got some good players on their side. Sushan Bari, I've always liked as a left arm spinner. Uh, Keswick Williams, the fans are all going to be dying to see. And you can see Kathmandu Kings, they're waiting patiently there. Brian Burrell shaking hands with the umpires. I hope that's not shaking hands in terms of possible postponement of today's game. I think they'll be certainly waiting around for a little while. But yeah, the fans coming in. I took a bit of a walk yesterday up into the famous banks of the TU International Cricket Ground just as the shower came down. Uh, just to go and, I suppose, give the fans a little bit of something, a bit of joy for the day. And it was just lovely to meet them all uh, walking along the grass banks. But even the banks themselves in the stadium quite muddy. There's been so much rain. Yeah. But the Nepali fans, there's no one else quite like them in the world. Rain, hail or shine win or lose, they'll be there to watch their cricket. They love it so much. Yeah. And I think uh, the reason, in fact, I think the Nepali fans have also majorly contributed to the fact that uh, the international leagues are so keen on having Nepali players as well because of fan following and because of the craze that we have in Nepal. Yeah, I think that's, what, that's one part of it, but also the skill of the, the, the Nepali players. Absolutely, you know, yeah. the, their bowlers in particular, you think of Sandy Blamachani, who's globe trotted around the world, Karen KC and, and Sam Palkami. Uh, Paris Kadku is now retired, of course, has played over in some leagues as well. But there's just such a fanatical following for the game here, but it's, it's definitely matched on the pitch. I think over the years, the Napoli batting has probably been its, its weaker suit. And, you know, really sad to not see Dependra Singh Iri able to play in this tournament, that ankle injury which he sustained there in, uh, in Oman. But, you know, the likes of young Kushal Mala, he's going to need to find a way to bounce back to form. Raham Mullah-Gurbaz there on your screen now. He is a really serious striker of the ball, not just here at the Everest Premier League, but wait till you see him at the T20 World Cup as well. But that's not a bad camera angle, that. You can just see the scale of rain. That is the King's squad on your screen there. Four overseas players. So Afridi has gone back, back to do some work for the Shahid Afridi Foundation. And Janet Cash will come into the side. The big star of the making in this side from the Napoli perspective, Gulshan Jia made his ODI debut there, the ball has come from nowhere, that one man, he's happy to pick someone, you can see maybe a little bit of a chat with Gulshan, just as we speak about it, there on our screens in front of us, but Gulshan Jia, all round cricketer, uh, bowls, bats, really good bowls, good pace as well. Probably we can head towards the ground again to watch that interview, is it possible? चयन करताओं ने आपका चयन हुआ और यूएसए के विरुद्ध में याद है आपका डेब्यू हुआ था तो कैसा लगा वो अनुभव कैसा था वो सफर बताइए थोड़े उसके बारे में बहुत अपने देश को रिप्रेजेंट करना बहुत ही बड़ा बात है वो बहुत अच्छा लग रहा था उस समय जब हम डेब्यू किए बहुत सपोर्ट मिला टीम के साथ सर के साथ कोच सर के साथ बहुत बड़े और वो जो डेब्यू मुकाबला था जो पहला मुकाबला आपने खेला यूएसए के विरुद्ध वो अनुभव कैसा था मतलब बहुत अच्छा बहुत अच्छा था मतलब उतना कुछ खास करके नहीं दे पाए टीम को लेकिन अपना पूरे हंड्रेड परसेंट ट्राई किए थे हम इन सब मुठ अच्छा बोले कि अच्छा किया आपने और आगे अच्छा ऐसे ही करते रहना और वो नेशनल टीम में अपने आप में आना बहुत बड़ी चीज है जी, आपका जी। आ, आप इतनी तेज गति से गेंदबाजी करते हैं आपका रोल मॉडल कौन है अगर अंतर्राष्ट्रीय क्रिकेट की बात करें कौन सा ऐसा गेंदबाज है जिसके तरह आप गेंदबाजी करना चाहते हैं जी पैट कमिंस ऑस्ट्रेलिया का पैट कमिंस फास्ट बॉलर हमको बहुत अच्छा लगता है उनका उनको बहुत फॉलो करते हैं देखते हैं उनको हम कैसे बॉल करते हैं कुछ वही और आपकी टीम के अंदर भी काफी एक्सपीरियंस है संदीप लामेचन ऐसे खिलाड़ी हैं अंतरराष्ट्रीय खिलाड़ी भी हैं तो काफी सीखने को आपको मिल रहा है जी जी बहुत सीखने को मिल रहा है सब हमेशा बॉलिंग करते समय सब आके मोटिवेट करते बताते क्या करना है कैसा सिचुएशन है सब बहुत सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं शायद अफ्रीदी से भी चर्चा हुई कुछ आपकी बातचीत हुई उस दिन बॉलिंग कर रहे थे वही देते ओवर में तो वो बता रहे थे क्या करना है कैसे करना है चलिए हमारी शुभकामनाएं ऑल द बेस्ट गुलशन फॉर द टूर्नामेंट एंड फॉर योर करियर एज वेल थैंक यू थैंक यू गुलशन जा टॉकिंग टू अस all right, that was Gulshan Zha. You just mentioned his name as a young, shining player in Nepal, right? So he just mentioned that Afridi was helping him, um, yeah, give, giving him tips regarding his bowling. Are you doing the translation for me? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't understand a word. I'm not, I, I could pretend. Yes, but I, heard, I, heard, I heard Afridi, I heard some Australian players mentioned. Yeah, yeah. yeah he did. Uh, so he was mentioning his um, role model as well as uh, Afridi, who was your... Uh, who helped him? He, who gave him a few tips? And that was that was Hindi, not Nepali. Ah, yeah. okay. I, I I knew that. 
You did? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I knew that. <laughs> He's getting quite familiar with our language, isn't he? All right. So, um, uh, what do you think? How important it is um, uh, for foreign players to come uh, to leagues like this and exchange not just like techniques but culture and you know um, how 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 does it help them grow as local players? Yeah, look, it's what these these franchise leagues are all about around the world, and it, it's also I think really what what adds so much to the Everest Premier League. You know, you talk about. The, the likes of a, a young Gulshan Jha who 18 months ago, 24 months ago, didn't even have, own his own pair of bowling boots and now he's been given the chance to take the pitch with Shahid Afridi. Like that is quite literally the stuff of dreams for young Nepali cricketers. When I was up in the crowd yesterday, I was mentioning, spoke to a young boy who told me, I will play for Nepal in three years' time. He said it with absolute laser focus certainty. Can, um, I, can I ask you the name of the player? Yeah, I'm going to forget it off the top so, of my sorry, head. It'll, sorry. it'll come to me. But sorry, yeah. If young, it does, please let us a, know. A young man, quite a spirit. Who, he was amazing and he would just laser eyed. He yeah. said, Andrew, I love watching your commentary. I guarantee you three years time, give me three years, I'll be playing for Nepal. But that's the, the passion that they have for the game here. But it also, if you can't see it, you can't be it. Right. So for young Nepali fans to be able to see these players here mm. in the flesh, and you mm. saw the reaction to Shahid Afridi mm. there at the TU International Cricket Ground. He really, he just inspired the next generation, there's no doubt. But to your question about how do the, the foreign players interact with the local players, they're incredibly tight-knit. You see them around the team hotel, they're exchanging you know, uh, knowledge about the game, uh, strategies, tactics, how to develop themselves as players, their fitness. We've seen them working in the gym together as well. There's the occasional miscommunication in the running between the wickets. We've seen a few calamitous yeah. runouts, yeah. <laughs> but that's all part of the game right. and that's all part and par parcel of these young players learning. I think the only thing missing in Nepali cricket, it's not the passion or the talent, it's just exposure. Right. And something like the Everest Premier League really gives young players great exposure to some of the best in the world. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, wrapped it up by saying, if you cannot see it, you cannot be it. How true uh, that is going to prove to our team so vital for a league like Everest Premier League. Um, there was a beautiful sum up. Nepali Dorsha Khoru Sappai Zana, like, I am a fan cricket fans of the Nepal Hami studio was in the Gulf Gulf Gorilla Korea, and we had an inspection in the Gulf Gulf Gorilla. Uh, 12:30 ma, the 12:30 inspection. inspection further news ki ground information Till then, let's uh, continue this export, and I'm so so happy and honored to have you here. It's so much fun to hear you talk and hear you comment as well. You know, you're, we're like sitting here and watching um, all the matches on big screen with big audio and it has been an amazing atmosphere here inside the studios as well we like we just take off our shoes and we <laughs> pretend this is the Sit ground back and enjoy. yeah <laughs> so and we listen to you. you we hear your comment and it's like a great great commentary that you've like it's incredibly kind <laughs> like I'm, always. Little, I'm blushing a little bit from that <laughs> like but for always, me yeah. this even coming on today and hopefully I'll join you a few more days uh, on the season, yeah. it feels very much like life coming full circle. Mm. We've been through a, a quite extraordinary 18, 19 months, not, not just here in Nepal, right the way around the world. Uh, so I was, I was presenting the show back in, in February and March of, of 2020, building up to the season, that was, and it was one of the first sports events to be cancelled. And then we continued with the show for what was then going to become once a week to just keep the flow going, going and, and keep yeah. things going. And then from nowhere, the Nepali government announced that it was closing its borders on, on Friday. I was actually sitting in the Turkish Airlines office on that day when they announced that. And it was, it was chaos. It was like being at ground zero mm -hmm. as they announced the borders were going to close. And, and luckily, Abdullah and his team got me out. I think it was the second last flight out of Kathmandu. I got mm -hmm. back to Ireland. I had to quarantine for, I ended up quarantining for nearly a month because I just I, I didn't want to come into contact with anyone who, who I might, might give some exposure to, even though I, I, I had no symptoms. Right. And um, yeah, the 18 months we then lived through, I don't think anyone could have predicted. So for the efforts that everyone has gone to, to be able to make this tournament possible, um, everyone involved, uh, not just in, in uh, the Everest Premier League, but the Cricket Association of Nepal, also all of the government agencies that have been involved to allow and enable all the f overseas players to get in so seamlessly. We really had a smooth entrance for both myself as, as a, one of the overseas commentators alongside the 24 overseas players. Um, you know, even the, the police here in, in Kathmandu, everyone's just been so supportive because they want to see cricket come back. And right now the rain is just playing a little bit of a spoil sport. Yeah. But sometimes the best things are worth waiting for. So maybe another day or two the sun will start shining right. and we'll be able to get going with the action again. 
Right, definitely. Like you said, uh, it has been a very tough year for, for not just sports, but overall, you know, like I'd like to raise the, the mental, um, like not just health, but the emotional health aspect of yeah. all the players all around the world. Because uh, they were like, there are few players who were on the verge of retirement and they did not like, you know, like they did not get to end uh, their entire career and wrap it up. Up as beautifully as they, as they want, yeah, ex as they wanted to. So, what do you think? Like, um, um, right after Oman, they have this league going on for them, right? Uh, mm. I, how do you think is this going to help them come out of uh, the darker side of whatever we faced in lockdown? Yeah, well, look, it was it was 18 months without any one-day internationals. The, right. the tri series in April uh, did give some cricket, but again. Even then, that was affected by the, the Delta variant right at the end. With crowds right. for the first three games, and then the, the government said no mass gatherings. Now, they might not have been able to come into the ground. The, the fans were up in the trees around the TU International Cricket Ground. We saw those uh, amazing scenes. But again, we were really lucky to get that tournament in before the, the, the Delta variant obviously hastened another lockdown. And you know, in Ireland, we had several lockdowns, really, really strict lockdowns. We weren't allowed to leave our, our house or go further than two kilometres from it unless you were going to to buy food, so well accustomed to that. But you talk about the mental health for not just everyone in society, but, but for sportsmen and sportswomen as well. Even when they get to play, often they're playing now in bubbles, and, right. and bubbles which are quite restrictive. restrictive yeah. You know, uh, the good thing is with vaccinations, I'm really hoping that as everyone gets vaccinated and vaccination becomes more and more available. We're lucky back in my country in Ireland, you know, we're up to about, I think, 90%. The numbers continue to grow here uh, in Nepal, which is really important because without those vaccinations, I don't see a way back to kind of normal life and normal sport. And sport is so much a part of life. It's, it's so important. It, it you know embodies everything wherever you are in the world, uh, all of the goodness of life, all of the joy of life. And you know, with with cricket coming back now for the Everest Premier League, I think it's just the start of what's going to be a more regular. Um, appearance of the sport right the way across the world and, and Nepal and all the associate nations are getting back into action more regularly which is really good. All right, thank you so much for wrapping that up for us beautifully. Uh, so I just got the news, <laughs> yeah, I feel like... Yeah, you're multitasking yeah, there, I, aren't I know, you? and I'm, I'm, I'm trying hard to concentrate. <laughs> I'm just rambling and you're multitasking. <laughs> yeah. You're doing the much harder job, I promise you. <laughs> I don't know from doing it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. But um, okay, so uh, fans are kolagi. Ek dumi doshra kar kolagi. So it's a curry run boy. So orko inspection ko time aye. So 130, 130 ma orko inspection huna gay rahe. So ra hopefully 130 ko inspection pasi ground pani ready boy. Ra hamle at least as a yota match boy pani ramari hai na paune hamra aasha tha hai na. Well, let's just hope for it. Um, uh, what do you think is going to happen if the match gets abandoned or cancelled today? Yeah, so what I believe, so there was a, a meeting of the six franchise owners right. and, and the EPL Governance Committee mm -hmm. last night, and the great thing is this is all of their decisions, they've been endorsed by, by the, the ICC, ICC, who sanctions yeah. the league, and um, all of the, the, you know, the, the match referee, the uh, umpires, everyone is on board. Everyone's united in wanting to play as much cricket as possible within this year's Everest Premier League. There's no doubt yesterday and the day before difficult, it looks like today could be difficult again, but they're going to do everything they can if we can get some sunshine going. So already the double header from yesterday is already definitely going to be refixed. If we have no play today, this game will be refixed. I think there might be as many as six or seven slots. We've got that little bit of wiggle room. I don't know if that's a, a phrase you'll understand, but we have that little bit of movement, the possible movement to be able to, when there's a single header game, be able to turn that into a double header. Yeah. And what that will be great for is that when fans come along for those double headers, they get double the value. So ultimately you might be able to turn what's a bit of a negative at the moment uh, into a positive. And as one of the fans told me in the crowd yesterday, what we all need to do, you'll know the word, I, I can't remember it, but we need to pray to the weather gods. There's a particular god. Oh yeah, Lord Indra. Yes, so we need to pray to Lord Indra and say, please, please, let's get the sunshine going and any more thunderstorms, let's leave them away. Let's send them off to, to Pokhara or to Viratnagar. Let's keep them away from Kathmandu for the moment. So it is so nice of you to, to get to know the crowd as well and know the fans as well and what they think. Um, are, are you a people's person? Are you like this? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think you might it. know the answer to this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, you know, how has the entire experience of being in Nepal 
been like um, you know normally we uh, we hear our foreign friends talk about Nepalese people and the yeah. happy faces and the smile on their faces and stuff like that and yeah look for me it, it's it's genuine I'm not just saying it because I'm here I, I'm on a television show with you it's one of the most special places in the world mm -hmm. and I didn't being very honest I didn't know a huge amount of what to expect when I first got asked right. to come right. and my two great friends uh, Kevin O'Brien and Paul Sterling two of my very best friends back in Ireland they came for the EPL in, in December 2018, and if it wasn't for Kevin, I probably never would have ended up coming here to commentate. I was doing a lot of commentating in Ireland, and Kevin recommended me to, to Amir Akhtar, the lead, uh, league owner, yeah. and it was the most overwhelming and joyous experience coming for the first time, and I've been lucky to come back six or seven times since then, and there's just something about the city, I don't know, and, and the people, really, uh, whether it be you're on a night out enjoying a nice cold beer or if you're uh, in one of the many cafes across the city. I love Lalapur in particular. You go across there into Sanaipa and, and yeah. you get these beautiful little neighbourhoods and, and, and districts. You go in and you get such an amazing welcome. And I spent a lot of time in India covering cricket as well, yeah. but it's, it's tangibly very different to India. And I think the difference is really the people. I'm not saying Indian people are bad at, at all, but a little bit more chilled out, a bit more relaxed here in Kathmandu mm -hmm. and uh, the people they give you such a welcome but there's also they give you all the space in the world and, and they just want to come and say hello and yeah, yeah the, the cricket fans in particular uh, it's all being very honest it's a, a little bit overwhelming as to how much love you receive and I just want to yeah. reciprocate that and say yeah thank you so much for it it's yeah, it's I quite, think you, quite incredible. Yeah, well, I think we've, you are definitely paying us back in kind by the <laughs> quality of broadcasting that you're Very doing nice. right now, <laughs> and the quality cricket that the world is going to like is witnessing right now mm. from Nepal. I think that means a lot to all the Nepalese cricket fans as well as all the you know the foreign players are here, like third countries playing, mm. all the other twelve nations fans as well. I think they are having a ball of a time like watching uh, this broadcast. Uh, especially. I'd like to ask you a quick question before wrapping mm, up for today because sure. uh, uh, the other inspection is going to happen at 1.30, right? So we'll just wrap it up now. But before that, there is there has been a change in term from M I MC uh, MCCI? Uh, I'm not sure what you're... All right. So the the term from batsman to batter? Oh, sorry. You mean from the MCC, the Marlborough MCC, Cricket Club? MCC, yes. sorry. Uh, yeah, they, sorry. they're the yeah. guardian of the laws, yes. Right. So they have, yeah, they've made a, a really big change. Um, right. And you might say, what's the importance?